Eddie Johnson here from Reactions Goalkeeper Coaching. I'm here at St George's Park with England goalkeeper coach Tim Dipmer. Hi Tim, how are you doing today? Morning Eddie, very well thank you. I've got a few questions here that I think will entertain our followers and goalkeepers and goalkeeper coaches in general. So Tim, you played as a goalkeeper at a high level and you've coached at some of the top academies such as Everton, Liverpool, Manchester City and you're now FA lead national goalkeeper coach as well as being an FA coach educator. So what is it about coaching the number one position that intrigues you most? I did enjoy playing at a reasonable level as a youth player. Didn't reach the heights that some do as a senior player but was privileged to play at some really good clubs uh, and also to coach at some excellent clubs as well. What's always fascinated me from a young age was how goalkeepers are coached, the type of things they're coached and the different and evolving parts of the game. I've always really enjoyed helping goalkeepers look at the game from a different perspective and also helping coaches and aspiring coaches to have a different outlook on the game and how it's coached. One of the hottest discussions I overhear at training regularly is parents discussing height and how unfair it is that little Johnny uh, was released from the XYZ Academy because he was deemed not to be tall enough. Now in the pro game height is a major consideration for obvious reasons but I've seen kids drop out of football altogether after this happens at say the age of about 11 and then they end up being 6 foot plus by the time they're 16. Can you offer any words of advice to these understandably concerned parents and players? Absolutely. A lot of goalkeepers who make it to the top level don't even play in goal until they're 15 or 16. Some don't even play football until that age. What that means to me is, for a young goalkeeper, you should enjoy playing and participating in as many sports possible and continue to work on your goalkeeping and play in goal when time permits. And the height and maturity issue will take care of itself in them latter teenage years and shouldn't be worried about too early. Good advice. You work on the psychological aspects of the game a lot. Similarly, at Reactions Goalkeeper Coaching, we continually preach our coaching ethos of learn, understand, practice, excel. How much more important these days do you think the mental preparation of a keeper is and at what age do you think it's best to start educating them on this side of the position? The role has always been a stressful one from a psychological point of view. The role of a defender or a goalkeeper is definitely more decision based whereas that of a striker or attacker would be more instinctive based. So the stresses that puts on the outcome of the decision obviously heightens. It's important that we train and prepare in a realistic environment so that there is a consequence to the outcome of any action and the environment shouldn't be made too comfortable or too soft for the goalkeepers. There should be consequences and there should be mental stresses put on good decisions made and also potential mistakes that are made. At Reactions we collaborate regularly with a girls football magazine She Kicks. Have you had much experience coaching girls and your opinions on the massive relatively recent growth in the female game? Yeah, firstly what an exciting time it is for the female game. It's fantastic to see the growth at the younger ebbs of it and also right up to the senior ages as well. Yes, I have had some great experiences coaching girls both in the UK and abroad and it's great to see how much that's coming along now. Uh, we coach younger lads and girls together in group sessions. What are your opinions on the differences between coaching male and female keepers, if any? I don't think there are any huge differences. I think the fundamentals of goalkeeping will always stand and will always be the same. So getting into good habits and sharing similar traits between both sides of the game is probably a sensible thing to do. And I think the boys can pick some stuff up off the girls and the girls can probably pick up some stuff off the boys as well as regards slight changes in, in tactics or styles that they choose to employ. Regards to any keeper dealing with pressure, if you can imagine they've had a string of poor performances, they're not sure of their teammates fully believing in them and their confidence is quite down, what can the coach and what can they do themselves to turn this around? OK, firstly, it's important that the coach involves players and the goalkeepers as one in the sessions so they treat them exactly the same, give them the same kind of challenges, give them the same kind of feedback. As a player it's important that you immerse yourself amongst the other players and conduct yourself in exactly the same manner as anyone else in the team would. Trying to understand other people's roles, trying to get other people to understand your roles should leave you in good stead to give you understanding between positions, between player relationships in order for you to help your performance and also that will then help your confidence. Excellent. With regards to the distribution, obviously some younger players will struggle at some point with goal kicks and we do quite often see the big centre-back taking the goal kicks. At what point 
in the goalkeeper's development do you think that that should become something that is not allowed? I think it's important that the coach and the goalkeeper come up with a more inventive way of taking a goal kick, whether that means a retreat line, whether that means the goalkeeper passing out and receiving it straight back and some relative support from the other players. Getting a defender to take the goal kick will fix the here and the now. Involving the goalkeeper and the other players in finding a way out of the back will definitely have more longevity in its setup and in its execution. A question from one of the She Kicks readers. I'm a young girl new to goalkeeping. Can you offer me any tips that I should try and focus on now? Definitely involve yourself in all aspects of the game. Don't specialise too early, just as a goalkeeper. Make sure you're playing enough sports where you're running round, where you're being a player, where you're passing, receiving, controlling. But then make sure you're also stepping into the goalkeeping world and getting your gloves on and trialling all the different aspects of the game that will be required of you at whatever level you play. But don't put yourself in one corner just yet. Keep doing everything which will help all aspects of your development and game. Question here from a playing surface perspective. We currently train on grass but next season my team will be playing their matches on 3G pitches. Should I train differently and is there anything I should be watching out for? I think it would be beneficial to train on some 3G pitches. I think the roll of the ball, the bounce of the ball, how it checks up with different spin on it will certainly affect the way that you play. Again, it's like anything, being able to adapt to different surfaces, different climates, different weather will only benefit you as a player. So I'd encourage you to be as open as possible and just try all the different things that that will throw up. So further on that point, Tim, do you think there will come a time when pro clubs will convert over to 3G? And if so, are you in favour of it? I think one thing we have seen in football is it's definitely becoming a more common theme, not just in this country but abroad. The Female World Cup was played on AstroTurf last year. More academies are building 3Gs, 4Gs. Our initiative at the FA is to build hubs around the country which provide more 4G opportunities for players to play on. So I think it's one that we should embrace and get used to and used to our advantage rather than see it as a negative if any people do. This interview will no doubt be listened to by many coaches and also parents of the keepers that are coached by us at Reactions Goalkeeper Coaching as well as the keepers themselves who range from 7 to 17. Now we coach girls and boys so let's cut to the chase purely from the heart who do you reckon to currently be best of the best and if you can't narrow it down I'll take a tactful top three. Okay, great question. I, I get asked it a lot. I think it's hard to say who the best goalkeeper in the world is because each team needs someone differently. Certain goalkeepers fit into certain teams a lot better. But if you wanted to push me for who are the best in the world, I would say after his rise to prominence, David De Gea, continued excellence, Manuel Neuer, perseverance and his ability to adapt to the game, Joe Hart. Okay. Further to that, we've had some close dealings with Jack Butland over the last few years. He's obviously our personal favourite. Where do you see his career going next? Unfortunate injury recently, but do you see him as being the number one in the future? Yes, I, I certainly do see Jack being England's number one in the future and also one of the leading goalkeepers in the Premiership and, and hopefully the world. A fantastic young man, great character, a huge personality, a real winner a real learner with the world at his feet and the world at his hands, excuse the pun, can go on to achieve anything that he likes in the game, given the right opportunity and fortune, and really exciting to see what he does next. And finally, Tim, you've personally coached some top keepers, but in an ideal world, if you could organise a dream session for a couple of hours, who would you want from any time frame, past or present, in that session and why? Yeah, I'd be intrigued to see what the keepers of the past brought to the session and how they trained. So I'd have to pick uh, David Seaman. would be fascinated to see how he conducted himself on the pitch. I'd love to see Pat Jennings and work with him and, and see what his approach is like. I'd definitely like to see Lev Yashin. Although it be a, a long time ago, I think his approach to goalkeeping was fantastic and how he conducted himself. So they would be my top three, really. Excellent. I could sit here and discuss this sort of stuff with you all day, Tim, but I know you've got a session to go to, so I'll finish by saying it's been a great meeting up with you again, very informative as always, but if you can leave us with one inspirational goalkeeper thought, what would it be? Think outside the box. Always remember what goes on inside the box. Like it. Tim, thank you very much. Welcome, mate.